Hey folks, if you enjoyed you here, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and click the bell for notifications. Also consider supporting us on Patreon for exclusive perks and check out our arts and media podcast, Words Like That, on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, now shut up and get to it. Can't have no words like that. Captain America, Brave New World. Let's just get straight into it, and I'll stop the halfway point and talk. Wilson. Thanks for coming in. Well, thank you for the invite, sir. Harrison Ford. I have to place in William Hurt. used it a new look. They said to lose the mustache or lose the election. Mm. You and I, I haven't always agreed in the past... But I want to make another run at making Captain America an official military position. And if we disagree on how to manage this situation, then what happens? Work with me, Sam. We'll show the world a better way forward. All right, all right. So let me just stop this halfway point. You just stop the halfway so we can get this on YouTube. Okay. I'm a huge Marvel fan. I'm talking about before it was hip and cool to like Marvel. I was an original nerd. It's long before the movies were coming out. Like, all we had was Christopher Reeve's Superman and Tim Burton Batman. That's the only two film franchises we really had whenever I became a fan of comic book superheroes. When the MCU debuted with Iron Man 2008, I was skeptical. We had been subjected to a lot of really, really bad Marvel adaptations. Not Marvel Studios, because Marvel Studios didn't exist until Iron Man, but uh, these other studios who had had bought these properties from Marvel. And even the good franchises like X-Men and Spider-Man had started going down with their third entries. We had X-Men Last Stand, uh... As a comic book fan, I think that was a great. Spider Man 3 felt the same way. So, 2008, it was like uh, they're doing Iron Man now. Nobody cares about Iron Man. He didn't even have a good cartoon. <laughs> and it came out, and it was this smash hit. I didn't even go see it on open weekend because I thought it was going to be terrible. And then it ends up being this smash hit. Everybody that I'm talking to is saying, dude, you didn't go see Iron Man. It's like one of the best superhero movies ever. So, I went to see it. And I was blown away, and I followed the MCU. I didn't miss an MCU picture until Black Panther, because I had an injury, and I could only I could only stay in a theater seat for one movie. And I chose to go see a different movie because I thought it was going to be better than it ended up being terrible. And then I saw Black Panther on home video, and I was like, man, I wish I could go see that. Instead. But anyway, so huge MCU guy. I feel like that it's fallen off after Endgame. I like the two Spider-Man movies, Far From Home and No Way Home in particular, although narratively there were some issues there, but it made up for it with some really good fan service. (laughs) The Disney Plus properties have all, I say all, the ones I watch, most of them start out strong and then crash and burn, I felt like, didn't really stick the landing in most cases, and then some I haven't even checked out. Some of the movies in the latest phase, Eternals I thought was pretty bad, Black Widow, I liked, but who really cares at this point? We already know how her story ends, and if this were to come out right after Civil War, sure. As it is, nobody really cares. Shane, she was an interesting one. I liked it. I didn't feel like it was a Marvel picture. It felt like it was completely disconnected, disjointed, more like a, a cool kung fu plus dragon type thing. So, I wasn't really hyped for this movie at all. I wasn't a huge fan of the Falcon and Winter Soldier series. I thought the first three, I think, maybe four episodes were pretty good. There was some filler in there, but overall pretty good. And it peaked when, spoiler alert, Wyatt Russell's character, U.S. agent, 
went nuts and killed one of the bad guys, bludgeoned him to death. And that was like, man, this is great. Well, the next episode is going to maybe even be even better. And then it just, to me, it just completely tanked. The ending of the show was a mess for me. So I wasn't really interested in this at all. So far, this is this is really hooking me here. And I think that's in no small part due to Harrison Ford. I love Harrison Ford. Great fan. William Hurt, who was the previous actor that played Ross, passed away. He's been replaced by Harrison Ford. And the reason they have that line in there about him shaving the mustache is because... William Hurt's character had the stash. Apparently Harrison Ford wasn't going to grow the stash for this movie, so they threw that line in there. And also it's a cue to let you know you're supposed to know this character previously. And he's killing it. I'm enjoying his dynamic. The way he's playing the character is a little bit different for William Hurt, but it also makes sense that William Hurt's character would have changed as he's continued to rise in politics, and he's now become the President of the United States. I like the tension that's been set up here between him and Falcon, Sam, and I couldn't tell. I, he said, Sam yelled out Isaiah. I think that was the older gentleman from Falcon and Winter Soldier who had been a previous recipient of the serum, and he was just treated absolutely terribly, and it looks like he kind of went rogue here, which is interesting. The only thing that gives me pause here, it seems like that it's going to be very connected to the Falcon Winter Soldier series, which, again, I thought kind of went off the rails there in its final episodes. So, I don't know. But, yeah, so far, I'm digging this. I have not seen an MCU picture in theaters since Multiverse of Madness, which I almost walked out on. I might go back to the theaters for this one. We'll we'll see. All right, let's get back to it. Your inner circle's been compromised. Either you can't see that, or you don't want to. What if it's a trap? Maybe it was that idea. Global power is shifting. Yeah. You're just a pawn. Giancarlo, yeah. You may be Captain America, but you're not Steve Rogers. Mm. This is true. Nobody is, though. Nice way to end that. Okay, I gotta say, that was a great teaser. That was a great teaser. That's one of the best MCU teasers I've seen in a while. I like the fact we got that quick shot of the Red Hulk there. And I don't know what direction they're gonna go in the comics. Spoiler alert. The Red Hulk is Ross, if I remember correctly, because that was kind of after beyond my time of actually following the comics regularly. But I believe in the comics he's Ross, and I, I think maybe somebody else has been him at some point after that. I'm not sure. People who have kept up with this a little bit more than I have can correct me in the comics if I got that wrong. But yeah, and of course we had Giancarlo Esposito, who is a phenomenal actor. He, from my understanding, he was kind of added late to the cast and put in in some reshoots. And initially, I think one of the big trades confirmed that he was playing a character from the comics called G.W. Bridge, which is interesting because that has X-Men ties, X-Force ties, Cable. But I saw an article this week, or the end of last week, where Esposito said that nobody had correctly guessed his character. So, I don't know. Yeah, I am color me intrigued. All right, now let's check out this next one. This is Agatha All Along. This is a Disney Plus series that's a direct follow-up of WandaVision, which, again, I liked the first three episodes and thought it kind of fell off after that. A lot of filler. It did on a big kind of cartoonish comic book battle, and I think they could have avoided that or done that better. But anyway, here we go. This is Agatha All Along. Okay. Another beautiful day. Surprised to see you out here, Detective. Jane okay. Doe. Found her down here by the water. Cause? 
blunt force trauma. What happened to you? Anybody with him? I have a lead in the case. But can't shake this feeling I'm seeing it wrong. Hmm. Ooh. Is this really how you see yourself? That witch is gone, leaving you trapped in her distorted Oh, Albert spell. Plaza. Albert Plaza, that's right. Claw that's your way on. out. Okay. I miss the glory days. She took every bit of power I had, but I can beat that witch. All right, several theories about the halfway point. Yeah, so far, this isn't really hooking me personally. I wasn't, again, a huge fan of WandaVision in the later episodes. I guess overall, I was a fan of it. But I think I'm kind of tainted by what they did to Wanda's character in Multiverse of Madness, which basically retread and undid a lot of her character development arc in, in that movie. So retroactively I've become a little bit more sour on WandaVision than I was maybe when I first saw it even though I still had quibbles then Catherine Hahn's character I enjoyed her on the series I'm not really feeling the justification to give her her own spinoff based so far on this trailer I realize we're only halfway through maybe it'll change I do like Aubrey Plaza great actress Parks and Rec Legion Great job on Legion, which I never did finish that last season because I felt like season two kind of also went off the rails. But anyway, yeah, I'm just not, this isn't really hooking me. The Falcon Winter Soldier, I mean, the Captain America Brave New World trailer immediately started hooking me in with Harrison Ford, the dynamic between his and Anthony Mackie's character and the political intrigue. N nothing really here so far for me. Let's finish this thing. Let's hit the road. Okay, some returning characters. From I'm going to walk the witch's road. I think it's supposed the road to be death wish. Billy Wanda's son. Join me. in her right mind would join Agatha Harkness's coven. <gasps> Not looking for right-minded witches as it happens. <laughs> Sweetheart, you okay? Oh my God! Whoa, what's she doing? Where's she going? Yeah, body horror type stuff, yeah. Yeah, that one's that was not for me, guys. I'm not big on horror, and I see now they're really going, they're leaning in that direction. And it's, I think it said it was a close to Halloween release. There, let's see if I can find that real quick with a date on there, September 18th. Okay, so and it'll, I don't know how many episodes it is, but it's Halloween season. Not really big on the whole witches thing, the dark magic, witchcraft. As such, it was fine with. The way Scarlet Witch's powers kind of worked and the mythology they built around that, for me personally, this really isn't my cup of tea. Didn't do much for me, but again, the Captain America Brave New World trailer did, so probably check that out. I will probably give Agatha a skip. What about y'all? Let us know in the comments. What do you think about the Captain America Brave New World trailer and the Agatha trailer? Are you going to go see Brave New World in theaters? Are you going to check out Agatha all along? on Disney Plus home streaming in September. Let us know in the comments. Hope you enjoyed that clip. If you did, consider supporting us on Patreon for the full episode. Subscribe to YouTube if you haven't already, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>